May I come? Sir? Just come in. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Take your seat. Thank you, sir. Nupur Goel. Yes, sir. Introduce yourself. I'm Nupur Goel, born and brought up in Delhi. I have done schooling from DAV Centenary Public School, Narela. After that, I did electronics and communication engineering from Delhi Technological University. Sir, after that, I did masters in public administration from IGNU. Uh, right now, I'm serving as an intelligence officer in Intelligence Bureau under Ministry of Home Affairs. When did you get that job? Sir, I got that job in 2017, but I joined last year after mains. Okay. You have already joined that service? Yes, sir. I am right now undergoing training in the same. Training. Where are you undergoing training? Sir, that's in Chanakya Puri, uh, 35 SP Mark, uh, New Delhi. So, how is your experience uh, with training? Sir, it's good. The basic uh, learnings that I got from uh, uh, this training as a foundational course. So, the basic uh, lookouts were discipline, punctuality. Um, I think I have become more disciplined and punctual. Uh, as well as honesty, so right now I'm more adept about what national security is, how complex it is, and what are the various qualities as well as uh, the various aspects of intelligence as an intelligence bureau. Okay. So, uh, what is the relevance of e-governance in that intelligence bureau? So, e-governance basically means integration of technology and how we deal with the administration or management. So in uh, Intelligence Bureau also, uh, we are moving towards big data, data analytics, and so various other technologies of like facial recognition techniques. So I think these are the various facets of e-governance in Intelligence Bureau. Do you think this artificial intelligence is, uh, has got a very good scope in this area? Definitely yes, sir. It has a very high scope because then the data and the information that we can get through artificial intelligence and the kind of processing and the analysis that can be done and that too very efficiently in nature. So this has a lot of advantage. But sir, at the same time, it, it is also a challenge. Sir, because artificial intelligence uh, is right now not regulated in India as well as in the world. So regulation uh, comes as a challenge in, in, uh, in the collection of intelligence, sir. So you look forward for some kind, sort of regulation for artificial intelligence, okay? Yes, sir. To some extent, there should be a regulation of uh, artificial intelligence or for any technology which has uh, both uh, advantages and disadvantages in the long run, sir. Achha, you are dealing with national security, as you have just said. Yes, sir. How do we, we get uh, information about national threat, some sort of threat? to our nation. How do we get the information? What are the agencies? Sir, there are various agencies. The first and the foremost being Intelligence Bureau, sir. Sir, apart from that, there are various other agencies also. Sir, for example, the Department of Revenue Intelligence, ED also works on the same. Sir, the RAW, uh, RAW the Research and Analysis Wing, uh, it works for the external intelligence uh, or the external security of the nation, sir. So apart from these, the NTRO, ED, and we, the finance, Depart finance Ministry also has two major segments, which also deal with the economic intelligence. Sir. What kind of relationship exists, whether there is a question of integration or uh, whether uh, it's a question of checks and balance? Sir, please clarify between uh, Intelligence Bureau and uh, these other agencies or any other agency no, no. in particular? Yes, uh, whatever the agencies mentioned by you. Sir, right now we are witnessing that any security implication or any internal security matter is related to various other agencies or various other things. They have become more complex in nature. Sir, so nowadays there is an increasing cohesion and coordination between all these agencies. And sir, the value of all these agencies are almost the same. They all work for national security. They all work for preservation of Indian constitution at large and they all work for national prosperity sir so i think okay uh, thank you nupur thank you sir. nupur what is the meaning of your name sir my uh, the meaning of my name is anklet in hindi it is ghungru but in english it can be said as anklet okay
your optional paper is pub public administration yes. what, what was the role of chanakya or kautilya in the development of indian administration sir it is said that the moral uh, foundation of indian administration has been largely given by kautilya he all, he talks about ethics in administration the welfare administration the saptang theory the mandal theory they all have relevance now in the foreign uh, policy of the state sir i think that that it is, is it is also said that uh, the mauryan administration has uh, hierarchical vertical horizontal complex bureaucratic arrangement what do you understand by this sir the right now the indian bureaucracy or the administration has largely taken the structural structure from vibarian bureaucracy which is horizontal vertical in nature uh, and hierarchical in, in nature so Sir, pyramidical as well hmm. pyramidical yes as sir well. thank you sir sir by the vertical hierarchy we mean uh, that there is a top boss who is having a subordinates so there is a hierarchy in between sir horizontal means uh, there are various sub uh, divisions of a same ministry or various other ministries working together towards a uh, given purpose so right now we are moving towards the pyramidical structure as the human relation theorists have uh, propounded sir here in we are moving towards more integration and uh, less hierarchiness nature of uh, bureaucracy sir okay uh, what are the problem with indian bureaucracy today sir there are various uh, problems as can be seen sir firstly the indian bureaucracy is right now pyramidical in nature wherein it is seen that at the lower level the staff is less as compared to the higher level sir secondly Uh, it is said that uh, it has not uh, it has not yet integrated with the technology as it should have been so the level of technology in administration is less so the third major thing uh, which maligns uh, the indian administration is corruption so the corruption perception index ranks india very high on it by transparency international uh, so the fourth major problem with indian bureaucracy as such is the lack of or inadequate agility which is uh, right now okay which... okay nupur thanks tell me what is the similarity between the mughal mansabdar and indian administrative service officers is officers the mansabdar system or the mughal administration was also called a kagzi sarkar uh, so in the same way the mughal the indian administration or the indian bureaucracy also moves on rules and it is also very uh, paper bound or paper bound in nature although we are moving towards the paperless bureaucracy in recent years uh, following the digitalization move by the government so the second major thing is uh, the mansabdar system was very centralized in nature although that has decreased in the indian bureaucracy as of now but um, more or less it is still centralized in nature so okay thank you nupur you traveled from narela yes sir Yes, ma'am. So, tell me, what route did you take? Ma'am, right now I am coming from Chanakya Puri uh, because I am undergoing training in the same. But if I would have taken go on come from Narela, I would have taken a car or a public transport one twenty till the Jahangir Jahangir Puri metro station, and then I would have changed to metros so as to reach here, ma'am. Okay, Nupur, what public goods? Ma'am, any good that is of public nature, I think it's public good. The health, uh, education. or uh, the roads that we use metro uh, they all are public goods you opted for public administration yes ma'am okay tell me what is the difference between foreign policies and domestic policies ma'am foreign policies are the policies wherein the government works sets out a policy of how it is going to deal with the different nations as well as the foreign organizations on the global level ma'am Whereas the domestic policies majorly focus on the internal matters of a, of an administration, but uh, largely, as we have seen after globalization, the domestic policy as well as the foreign policy, they have become a more interlinked in nature. Which of these two should be more focused upon for development of an economy like India, poor economy? Ma'am, I think that. the national the domestic policies should be focused more but at the same time the foreign policies are also having a lot of significance because any domestic policy that the government uh, works on or takes 
can have ramifications on the foreign level as well as we can have foreign assistance in implementing the domestic policies ma'am okay nupur tell me what's your take on women uh, empowerment ma'am i think we are moving in a very right direction and women empowerment is taking place uh, because the number of uh, females that are educated right now uh, they have increased the dropout rates have decreased to a large extent uh, the number of entrepreneurs uh, women entrepreneurs in the country as well as the women led startups have increased to a large extent ma'am although uh, there is still a long way to go but we are moving in a very right direction and i think that day is not far away when uh, we'll have an equal labor force participation rate as well as uh, various women leaders leading the you talk about government. the labor force participation rates yes ma'am if we keep every other thing constant and we just give more employment to women will that increase their empowerment or do you need to do anything else also ma'am uh, giving employment to anyone be it women or men is no doubt a very high or a very strong move towards the empowerment but we should also take in mind that women empowerment is not an end in itself it is a means towards uh, achieving an equal society so i think apart from giving employment she is also to be skilled made healthy given proper incentives to take decisions not only at a uh, at her own level but also at the level of family education education and ma'am there have to be a change at the society at the family as well as the organizational levels she has to be empowered not only through economy as the employment talks okay, about okay last one from me uh, you mentioned diary writing as one of your hobbies yes ma'am have you read that book uh, diary of a young girl yes ma'am that who's the author any frank or the one what is the book about Ma'am, it's about the Jewish Holocaust during the Second World War. Uh, it basically talks about the various uh, sufferings that she and her family has to go just because she's a Nazi, a Nazi, uh, living and uh, right. living Thank during that time. Nupur, you are a public administration student, right? Yes, sir. Chanakya is called the Machiavelli of India. Yes, sir. When we draw this comparison, or for that matter, any other comparison, why do we always look at the West? are we still psychologically a slave to the west or do we have any independent existence as such sir it's very unfortunate that any study of public administration as such draws its inspiration as well as examples more from western countries sir i think the major reason because uh, the study of administration as such the public administration that start that has its origin in west sir when in 1887 the papers of administration got published sir but the things are improving right now uh, for example sir the latest uh, latest summit uh, which is going to happen in 2000 to 28 sir uh, the theme of it is the globalized world and uh, right now we are seeing a lot of uh, non western thinkers as well as the non western studies coming up which focus on Uh, the administration in non-western countries, and uh, we have stopped drawing uh, comparison amongst the West and the East. Okay, now suppose you are district magistrate of Narela. Uh, U.S. President uh, Mr. Trump is about to visit your district, and he will be inaugurating a power plant facility there. The area where this power plant is situated is uh, uh, inhabited by a uh, lot many Jugis. Fine. you are under instruction from your higher ups that you have to make certain arrangements so as to ensure that uh, these people who are living in a in in abject poverty should not you know catch the attention of president trump what uh, arrangements will you uh, make f- to ensure this order to be complied with sir if any person is living in a jhuggi or an an uh, irregularized society the ideal solution that can that we can have is to rehabilitate them No, that the, cannot be an immediate uh, option. That yes. cannot be an immediate option. Suppose he is uh, visiting in a couple of days, and you are getting this instruction today. What will you do? You will tell them to vacate uh, the premises and go to some other place, or you will do certain things like uh, barricading uh, uh, them into some enclosure so that uh, their their images should not ki- catch the eyelids of uh, the visiting president. What will you do, sir? I think that uh, the people who are living. Uh, or inhabiting that area they are of more importance 
to the district administration or to the people in governance. So even if they catch eye of Donald Trump or the foreign dignitary that is coming, so that's not a problem. But if there is some security concern because of those irregular colonies or slums or the areas or it, ma it can also be a thing that uh, some criminal mindset people might come and inhabit it with them. Sir, if that is the case, then I think we should go with proper arrangements of uh, barricading the things, etc. Sir, but otherwise, if no such concern is there, and if we have done proper so, ASL... So, uh, you are suggesting except for the security concerns, uh, you will not uh, adhere to the instructions given by your uh, high offices. You will have your autonomous say in this, knowing very well that, you see, your, your performance will be reflected in your APR. And uh, this will be considered as uh, uh, not complying with the lawful duty that has been entrusted on you. What will you do? Sir, I believe that any APR, uh, the people satisfaction and the ideas of the one who are inhabiting that district is much above the APR or the annual performance review. No, poor it is easier been... said than done. When you are facing the ground reality, it is very tough uh, to say no to your bosses, mind it. Sir, my initial reaction would be to have a say, to have a conversation with the higher bosses to convince them that either they should have some rehabilitation or proper rehabilitation mechanism to be there. And if it's not possible, then let's uh, make an arrangement that uh, both of them don't, uh, don't come into such catchy situations, sir. Sir, I think taking the higher bosses into what we are thinking uh, sir, I, because higher bosses are also humans and it is a very humanly treatment that we are supposed to give to the people who are living uh, in their own country, sir. Uh, sir, I think that APR wouldn't, uh, sir, as a last resort, if nothing happens, I think I would go with a bad APR. Uh -huh. Okay, well, you will insist uh, with your stand, huh? Yes, sir. Sir, I'll insist with my stand, but at the same time, I will also ensure that uh, there, if there is some other actual concern or a concern that might have slipped my mind during the whole procedure, uh, if there is some serious concern, I'll adhere to them. Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, Nupur, uh, you are a student of public administration. Yes. Sir. Uh, what do you understand by this term, unity of command? Sir, unity of command has been one of the founding principles in the post cob era, wherein uh, the unity of command means that there should be a single boss or single superior having some subordinate. Uh, this basically leads to less, uh, more discipline and less confusion. But the subordinate can disobey him or her from time to time. Uh, sorry, sir. In I... unity of command, is it also mentioned that uh, the subordinate can disobey? I don't think so, sir. I'm sorry. So, he it can't... has to be followed. The yes, command has yes, to be sir. followed. Okay. Could government is a concept and uh, a self comment is also a concept. So if there's a choice between these two and only one is possible, which one would you prefer and why? Sir, I think I'll go with good government, good government, uh, because good government ensures that... Even though it is not a self government, it has been imposed on maybe the country or the people, and they are not having much say, but it is good, like it is looking after the welfare and doing everything what the people want. Sir, if you allow to think, uh, me to think for some time and then come up with a solution. Thank you, sir. Sir, I think, uh, sir, I want to change my stand. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, sir, I think I'll go with the self-government, wherein uh, a government which is by the people and of the people uh, should lead to good government in the large uh, run. Okay. Uh, where will you place yourself in this Maslow's need hierarchy? Which, which level and why? Sir, uh, civil services are getting into IS as a platform that I think uh, converges all the six needs at one instance. Uh, sir, it completes our physiological needs, the safety, security, esteem, as well as the self-actualization that one gets to have when he or she so becomes... So, everybody who has been selected in IS, do you think uh, that person has uh, achieved self-actualization? Sir, so self-actualization is a subjective concept as talked by Maslow. Uh, it is different from the, for different people. If I talk about my own self, then I think if I, if by servicing the nation, by serving the people, 
if I am able to satisfy uh, even one person's need or if I am able to... Okay, Nipur. Uh, tell me what do you understand by this term blue dot network? Are you aware of it? I am sorry, sir. I'm, I have limited knowledge about okay. it. Okay. Uh, India's uh, act is policy. Do you think it has been successful or it is like, uh, like Loki's to act is it's like uh, old wine in a new bottle? Sir, I think it has been very successful as far as the connectivity uh, issues were concerned. Sir, terming it as a, an old wine in a new bottle would be a very extreme statement to make because we started working on our uh, on various fronts after Act East policy. It's a bit economic angle. We enhanced the trade, uh, the connectivity, the people to people interactions got widened up. Uh, sir, at the same time, we also uh, worked on security parameters with them. Uh, taking okay, the my whole... last question to you, you come from Delhi yes. and the Delhi government uh, has offered free rides in metro and buses for women. Do you think it is a patronizing attitude of the government or you feel that yes, this is what is needed for women empowerment? Sir, giving free rides to women as such is a good move, but it should also be associated with a give it up campaign as was launched along with the LPG scheme. So, uh, sir, I think if it is more directed in nature towards the more economically weaker section of the society and especially ladies, it's a good move. But at the same time, sir, uh, the public transport should be more uh, strengthened in Delhi uh, so as to actually address the issue of women's security in transportation is concerned. Okay, thank you, sir. Nupur, uh, whenever some uh, rape takes place, the immediate reaction is to punish the culprit instantly or sometimes it is also public uh, opinion that culprits should be hanged immediately. Now taking example of the Nirbhaya case, okay, uh, it has taken almost uh, more than seven years, still continuing and uh, the appeals to high court, or first the local court, then high court, then supreme court, precedent, LG, and still we are not sure of the hanging date. What do you take about this? Sir, it's unfortunate that in spite of having, I think, uh, eight years, uh, the culprits have not been punished, they have not been hanged. But at the same time, sir, we can't go for, in, uh, for uh, such popular statements or encounter killings as has uh, usually been demanded by the popular mandate. Sir, because Firstly, the Indian judicial system, it usually works on uh, not even a single uh, innocent should be punished. So, but at the same time, we should fast track the whole procedure. So the MHA, the Ministry of Home Affairs, the government also came up to fast track the mercy petitions, the number of mercy, peti the review petitions that the person can file. Uh, sir, I think they, these areas should be worked upon as soon as possible, sir. Uh, Nupur, uh, regarding right to property to women, uh, they have been given right to property, but even then they are not claiming it. Why? Sir, the women usually don't claim the property because I think in the Hindu society, in the Indian society, it's usually said uh, that uh, girls are parayadhan and uh, I mean they are someone else's. You are the single child? Uh, no, sir. I am having my brother also. Okay. I mean, so will you claim it? Sure, sir. It's my right and I'll claim it. The things are changing on ground. I said even my, uh, my aunts also claimed that. Uh, so it's not about claiming the property. It's about having a, a right till death on the ancestral or on the maternal, paternal homes uh, that the girls have. Uh, so usually it's being seen that... So it is the automatic right. You don't have to claim it. Huh? Uh, yes, sir. Although it has been legal by the Hindu Property Rights Act or by various other rights act of the government, sir. Okay, Nupur, one more thing, that uh, during a historical period, women were compared with property itself, okay? Uh, and uh, we see Bollywood movies and even uh, Tollywood, other movies, they represent women as commodity and products. Do you think that some steps should be taken to curb these kind of representations? Definitely, sir. The commodification of women, be it in the item girl numbers, songs, or having a very limited role of a woman or a woman character in a film, 
uh, this should be checked uh, but at the same time sir i feel that we are moving towards a right direction wherein we are also having some films like queen neerja uh, who are showcasing and celebrating uh, the women power the women strength and yes sir uh, the commodification of women in every beat songs or film uh, nupur you are an empowered woman there is no doubt about that what is the percentage of empowered women in india compared to the if we compare it with the total population of women sir i am not aware about the exact figure but if uh, if i am allowed to guess a certain figure uh, sir the female labor part force participation rate is around 19% in india uh, which has been recently told by some reports uh, sir apart from that the number of educated women especially in the richer households or uh, where we can assume that they have some say in the decision making in the family Uh, sir, I am assuming them to be around twenty percent. Okay, so there should be increase in around labor participation as well as increase in educated women. That will solve the problem. Okay. Mm, yes, sir. Okay, Nupur, thank you. Interview is over. Thank you. Can you go now. Thank you. Just sit down, please. Thank you, sir. So, Nupur. How is your assessment? Sir, I think I did good. Sir, rest you will tell. Mm hmm. Anupur, uh, you are in uh, intelligence service, no? So uh, you are undergoing training. In which year you have joined that? Uh, like. Twenty nineteen, sir. Twenty nineteen. Okay. So it is not mentioned in your DAP. Yes, sir. Uh, why? Uh, there are two reasons firstly we are not supposed to tell until until and unless we are facing the interview okay and secondly sir i have not joined uh, when the daf one was filled so that was the main reason uh, how much marks did you get there in interview sir that was something which is classified which is that is classified intelligence oh, okay now your army and all, <laughs> all all of them classify the things whether it is army or maybe like nupur uh, Uh, you are a good candidate you are already successful you are an achiever and uh, naturally associated with your intelligence and then national security so lots of uh, responsibility expected from you and even lots of questions will be asked from you then uh, you are quite enthusiastic and i also observe that uh, you were always eager to listen to the question asked Uh, that was uh, there you are polite you are disciplined you are optimistic also uh, but at the same time uh, there are certain important things for example when you reply always try to be to the point and before answering think about that that's very important uh, don't change your stand Okay, good governance, self govern, governance. That kind of thing. Don't change that. Okay, number one. Uh, that uh, depends on your uh, ability to listen to the question, understand it, and then react. Okay, the, that's a very important thing. Then uh, regarding your uh, women participation in labor. Okay, yeah, you had a good interaction with that. And then uh, uh, besides uh, participation in labor as a labor force. then other others i'm happy that you have come out with many things but naturally the the most important other is education yes sir education not just in the context of india it is all over world everywhere women's education is being emphasized because it is not considered as the panacea for all the kinds of problems okay so uh, at that time labor because the honorable member ultimately almost inserted that education in your mouth education uh, yes education uh, so uh, you should have uh, to have to be alert then also that is sweeping statements sometimes like uh, so try to curb that that's very important because you are already in a service you are very responsible person and uh, you have to uh, look forward and for that uh, uh, many qualities but this uh, will be looking for many qualities 
in you and uh, you have to highlight uh, your qualities. Then uh, another important thing, you have got a very pleasing personality, a smiling face, no doubt about that. Sometimes uh, the board feels uh, you can also sometimes curb the tendency to smile. Continuous smile sometimes not good. Okay. Uh, otherwise, pleasing and smiling personality that is an asset. Most of the candidates they lack it, and uh, you have got the personality with that kind of thing. It's uh, also very important. Then, whenever opinion-based question is there, take your time. Yes. Don't uh, rush into that. Okay. Uh, because uh, there you might get trapped. So be careful about that. Otherwise, uh, uh, as a candidate, uh, you are very good, okay? And we are very positive uh, about your success. And we hope that uh, you will be there uh, in that list. Uh, and from uh, if uh, we think about you, you will not get more than 180, 190 marks, like less than 180, 190 marks. Even you can cross 200, but once you curve your that uh, tendency to react to the situation instantly, uh, situations you will have to handle. And uh, regarding women empowerment, lots of questions might be asked from you. International Women's Day just gone by. You should have idea about that also. And uh, hope uh, you do well there. Uh, don't make any sweeping statement. That's very important. And even about national security, have all the idea about that. Okay? Yes. All the best, Bapur. Ah. Yes, uh, if you want to ask. Sir, what is Blue Dot Network? Blue Dot Network, uh, when President Trump came to India, like uh, basically that time it came into news and it is uh, like kind of a certification mechanism by which they will uh, provide funding or af after they certify under this network any infrastructure project, it will get easier access to funds. So it is somewhat in opposition to the BRI initiative of China, but not in direct opposition. You can read about it. Uh, Nupur, you also missed out one thing, just uh, uh, able to recollect, and uh, you faltered on that. You committed a mistake. A Trump's visit, that's a great like occasion. And uh, so many things are there, like uh, security concern is certainly there. But if some instruction came from the above, then at that time, you should abide by that. Uh, don't, uh, otherwise uh, you were being trapped as such through your answer. I'll do that, I'll do that, and endless kind of thing. No, yes, because that's of uh, international significance. Security reason concerned is certainly very important. And then also, like, if it is said that, okay, it will represent India's position and that kind of thing. So uh, barricading some area, it is not of a great, uh, like, problem kind of thing. Even the barricade was done at Ahmedabad. So much of barricading was done. Uh, so, and it was implemented by the officials responsible for that. So you don't have to question uh, officials for that. You don't have to interact with them. You don't have to talk about that your ACR will be written or that. Uh, you don't have to. Take a position, form position, and be clear about that. Okay? Okay. All the best. Nupur. Thank you, sir.